Man, so when basketball, the playoffs start, I get sad. When the finals sad, uh, when the finals start, I get even more sad. Then when they end, I get a wave of sadness that comes over me because I don't have basketball to watch every night. But thanks to YouTube, um, I want to say thank you to Stephen Chin, Chad Hurley, and Jawad Kyrim. I think I said his name right. If I didn't, I apologize. We're creating YouTube because now I can go back and watch uh, I can watch runs. I can watch Rico Hines runs. I can just watch pickup games. I can watch street ball games. I can watch documentaries. I can watch um, older games from when I was the 90s, the 80s, the 2000s when I was growing up. And it just keeps my basketball fix going. Like I just I just binge watched um, what's the name of the show? Swagger. Shout out to Kevin Durant for that show. It's pretty dope. I'm currently watching Winning Time. So in the off season, I always have like now I have a basketball fix until the season starts. But this year, we have FIBA going on, which is um, the International Basketball Federation, or it goes by the French acronym, the Federation Internationale de Basketball, which is founded in 1932, Geneva, Switzerland. Now, FIBA has an organized men's cup since 1950, then they brought the women's cup in in 53, and both events are held four years alternating the Olympics. So I like basketball so much, I'm not, I don't just pay attention to just the NBA. I mean, I, I watch women's basketball. Like I said, I watch street ball. I mean, sometimes I just go to the court just to post up and just watch people hoop or go to a gym just to watch people hoop. I've tried to pay attention to all the FIBA's game, but it's pretty overwhelming trying to watch all the nations play. So I cut it down, and I thought about making a separate channel for FIBA, but it's too much time has passed now, so I just want to do a bunch of recaps. So I trimmed it down to trying to catch the games with um, popular NBA players like um, so I think we all know America has the players, Canada, Australia, the Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Slovenia, well, Greece has some players. I don't have a full list right now. But, um, so, but I'm going to keep it in. So I'm, I'm about to skip past, bounce past through um, Team USA's games. You know, Team USA, the United States of Athletes. That was corny. I'm not editing that, though. Too far in right now. So... America got beat by the Germans who have been whooping ass through the tournament. They're 7-0. They're being led by the Lakers, Dennis the Menace. Wait, no, no, no. He's a rapper now. Dennis Schroeder and his fellow Germans have been kicking ass, man. Um, team USA is 5-2 and two at the moment. The German team just knocked America out of the gold medal play. 113 to 111. World War II vets take a deep breath. I know y'all ain't go through that shit just to get beat by German basketball players in 2023. Uh, Andreas Obst, Obst led Germany with 25 points, six assists. The Indiana Pacers' Daniel Tice had 21, 7, and 2. Orlando Magic, Franz Wagner had 22, 5, and 2. Dennis the Menace finished off America with 17 points, two rebounds, and nine assists. On the American side, Anthony Edwards continued to show us why he's one of the future of American hoops. With um, We've got 23 points, eight rebounds, three assists. Austin Reeves had 21 points, two rebounds, and Mikel Bridges followed up with 17, two, and two. And the second loss that America got was handed to by Lithuania, 110 to 104. Lithuania was led by uh, Vitus Karanauskas with 15 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists. Two assists. Uh, Mardagas Kuzminkas had 14, 2 and 1. And the New Orleans Pelican Jonas Valachunas had 12 points, 7 rebounds. On the American side, Anthony Edwards once again dropped 35 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists. The New York Knicks, Jalen Brunson, put up 14 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists. Yo. The Mavericks, we dropped the ball on getting rid of Jalen Brunson. Man, he instantly went to the Knicks, got them to the playoffs, or helped get them to the playoffs, and now he's on Team USA. All right, Mikel Bridges in that game had 14 points, three and one. All right, America beat Montenegro 85 to 73. Again, we're led by Anthony Edwards with 17 points, three rebounds, and one assist. Austin Reeves had 12, two and two. Jaron Jackson had 11 points and one assist and Montenegro was steered by uh, 
Chicago Bulls, Nikola Vucevic, who had a nice double-double of 18 points, 16 rebounds. Kendrick Perry had 14 points, 2 rebounds, 6 assists. And Marko Simeonovic had 9, 3, and 1. That's the next American game. All right, America beat Jordan 162. Wait, I think Michael Jordan could beat America 5 on 1. Maybe. All right, the top scorers for America were Anthony Edwards with 22 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. Bobby Portis had 13 points and 6 rebounds. And Jordan's leading scorer was former NBA player Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who dropped 20 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists. Freddie Ibrahim had 10, 4, and 4. All right, you're rolling. Next game, America beat Greece 100 to 81. Austin Reeves had 15, 5, and 6. Anthony Edwards had 13, 3, and 2. And Greece was carried by um, a former NBA player, Jorgis Papayanis. Oh, I was a Giannis in there. With 17 points, three rebounds, two assists. And uh, Nikos Rogvakopoulos had 14, 4, and 1. Now, this game I saw was buzzing around the internet. New Zealand, because they did, um, New Zealand team did a haka dance in front of Team USA. Maybe to flex on them or try to psych them out. But the dance is pretty cool. I've always uh, enjoyed those dances from that culture, man. Uh, Pablo Banquero flexed with 21 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist. Anthony Edwards had 14 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists. Austin Reeves and Jaron Jackson had 12 points each. And New, England, uh, New Zealand's uh, Ruben Tarangi had 15 points, 2 rebounds, 1 assist. And Shea Ilyi had 12, 4, and 5. Then the USA came out and booted Italy. I see what I did there? 163. You know, this was the first game after all the hyperbole that came from losing to Lithuania. So I think America wanted to, not think, I know they wanted to come out there and smack somebody. Mikel Bridges had 24 points, seven rebounds, one assist. Tyrese Halliburton had 18, four and four. And um, Italy was held down by uh, the Utah Jazz, Simone Fontecchio with 18 points, five rebounds and one assist. And Stefano Tonut had 11, four and five. So that is the caught up record with USA FIBA hoops. They play Canada next for the bronze. And if you notice the trend, Anthony Edwards and Austin Reeves are breaking into even more star roles. And along with the, the rest of the team USA, man, I expect them to take this experience back to their respective teams and just add to their rosters. A big talking point is um, Brandon Ingram not being as relevant as people thought it would be. I thought it would be. Brandon Ingram's a great basketball player. But I guess in this system, he's not working. I it may be some comments he made. Maybe uh, coaches Steve Kerr and Eric Spolster are just trying to little bro him and tell him that he's bigger than one individual. Don't ever be questioning a team publicly like that. So like I said, next, America will play an NBA stacked Canadian team that also went five and two. They lost to Brazil and Serbia. For Team Canada is being led by the Oklahoma City Thunder, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who is an all-star that's averaging 20 plus on the FIBA stage. And if you haven't watched them, check out the Canadian team. They're really fun to watch, man. And um, they have the third most NBA players with seven, then Australia has eight, then of course, America is number one. We got what? Shea Gilgis plays for the Thunder, like I said. Dylan Brooks on the Rockets. RJ Barrett is a Nick. Kelly Olenek for the Jazz. Dwight Powell plays for the Mavs. Lugans Doris plays for the Thunder. And Nikhil Alexander Walker plays for the Timberwolves. What else round it out? Oh, yeah. Since I'm a Mavs fan, I've been paying attention to the Slovenian team just to watch Luka, who was almost averaging 20, not almost. Yeah, he almost averaged 27 points a game. But they got eliminated by Germany. But like I said, I just wanted to see. I just want to see Luca in the offseason. And hopefully with a full training camp and some time off, him and Kyrie clicked up, linked up, talked some shit, chopped it up, and they do better on the court because when they got Kyrie after the trade deadline, the season kind of went down. And I want to shoot him some bail and just say that was just because they didn't have time in jail, time to bond.